Scientists built a CO2 eating machine that runs on the sun. We have so much CO2 in the atmosphere and it's, well, heating up the planet. It's making it uh, potentially a dangerous place to live one day. And unfortunately, it's accelerating. It's happening faster than ever before. But if this machine can be commercialized, this may be the solution. At least one of a number of solutions. Now, of course, if we transfer the world to completely renewable energy within the next 10 years, which is very, very possible, some experts say it's going to happen because of cost factors alone, that's going to help. But we need more than just that. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you with us. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. If you'd like to become a YouTube member, I'll put a link in the description below. Scientists have developed a sunlight-powered reactor that directly captures CO2 from the air and transforms it into a sustainable fuel. Unlike traditional carbon capture methods, which, to be honest, um, are expensive and often just not worth it, this device requires no fossil fuel energy, making it a game changer for the climate crisis, says ScienceDaily.com. By mimicking photosynthesis, which is what occurs with plants, it produces syngas, a crucial ingredient in fuel and pharmaceuticals. And they, there's plans now to scale up for liquid fuel production. So how does this all work? Well, here's the thing. Scientists at the University of Cambridge, they've developed a solar powered reactor that captures carbon dioxide directly from the air and converts it into sustainable fuel using sunlight. When I first read about this, I thought, this sounds unreal. This sounds like something that if we could make potentially tens of thousands of these devices, even bigger versions of this, it might be the perfect solution. What do you guys think? Let me know what you think in the comments. This innovative reactor though has the potential to produce fuel for cars and planes, or let's just forget about cars because cars are going electric because it makes sense, but airplanes or even ships, as well as essential chemicals and pharmaceuticals. It could also provide a reliable energy source in remote or off-grid locations. Unlike traditional carbon capture technologies, which require fossil fuel energy and involve transporting and storing CO2, this reactor eliminates those steps. Instead, it directly converts atmospheric CO2 into useful products using only sunlight. The research findings were published uh, recently, um, the research findings were published back in February in Nature Energy. While carbon capture and storage has been promoted as a solution to the climate crisis, receiving 22 billion euros in UK government funding, which is a lot of money for, uh, to be honest, devices that don't really work that well yet, it is still very energy intensive. Additionally, concerns persist over the long-term safety of storing pressurized CO2 deep underground, though ongoing studies are assessing whether or not that is a significant risk or whether or not it's something we shouldn't be doing. Aside from the expensive and the energy, aside from the expense and the energy intensity, CCS, carbon capture storage, provides an excuse to carry on burning fossil fuels, which is what caused the climate crisis in the first place, said Professor Erwin Reisner, who led this research. CCS is also a non-circular process since the pressurized CO2 is at best stored underground indefinitely where it is of no use to anyone. Now I should point out here uh, where I live a few kilometers away there is a company that is working on that actually does take carbon from the atmosphere and turns it into bricks that you can build houses with or buildings with. So that's another option as well. What if instead of pumping the carbon dioxide underground, we made something useful from it, said first author Dr. Cyan Carr from Cambridge's Yusuf Hamid Department of Chemistry. CO2 is a harmful greenhouse gas, but it can also be turned into useful chemicals without contributing to global warming. And this got me. This is the part where the hook kind of said to me, hang on a minute, we can produce it into actual useful products, a variety of different products that aren't going to contribute to global warming. And I'm thinking, okay, is this too good to be true or is this real? As if this is real, it seems amazing. The focus of Verizon's research group is the development of devices that convert waste, water, and air, practical fuels, and air into practical fuels and chemicals. 
These devices take their inspiration from photosynthesis, the process by which plants convert sunlight into food. The device doesn't use any outside power, no cables, no batteries. All they need is the power of the sun. The team's newest system takes CO2 directly from the air, converts it into syngas, a key intermediate in the production of many chemicals and pharmaceuticals. The researchers say their approach, which does not require any transportation or storage, is much easier to scale up than earlier solar-powered devices, which didn't really work when it came to mass production. The device is a solar-powered flow reactor, and it uses specialized filters to grab CO2 from air at night, like how a sponge soaks up water. When the sun comes out, the sunlight heats up the captured CO2, absorbing infrared radiation, and a semiconductor powder absorbs the ultraviolet radiation to start a chemical reaction that converts the captured CO2 into solar syngas. A mirror on the reactor can concentrates the sunlight, making the process much more efficient. The researchers are currently working on converting solar syngas into liquid fuels, which could be used to power airplanes or ships, you know, for industries where batteries haven't quite taken off yet. And this does not add, they say, more CO2 to the atmosphere, which, to be honest, kind of shocked me. I was thinking to myself, okay, if you're burning this fuel in a machine or an airplane, surely this would be adding CO2 to the atmosphere. And then the researchers say that's not what happens. If we made these devices at scale, they could solve two problems at once, removing CO2 from the atmosphere and creating a clean alternative to fossil fuels, said Carr. CO2 is seen as a harmful waste product, but it is also an opportunity. The researchers say that a particularly promising opportunity is in the chemical and pharmaceutical sector where syngas can be converted into many of the products we rely on every single day without contributing to climate change. They are building a larger scale version of the reactor and will begin tests within the next few months. If scaled up, the researchers say the reactor could be used in a decentralized way so that individuals could theoretically generate their own fuel, which would be useful in remote or off-grid locations. So decentralizing energy is hugely important to democratizing um, society, essentially. What they're saying is you could just simply purchase one of these devices yourself and if, you can, if you're off grid, if you're in a remote location or whatever it may be, you're in your own country, your own state, you can produce these fuels that you need without purchasing fossil fuels from Saudi Arabia or China or anywhere else of that matter. Instead of continuing to dig up and burn fossil fuels to produce the products we have come to rely on, we can get all the CO2 we need directly from the air and reuse it, they said. We can build a circular, sustainable economy if we have the political will to do it. The question is, is this happening? Well, SciTech Daily says the technology is being commercialized with the support of Cambridge Enterprise, the university's commercial arm, and the research is being supported by UK Research and Innovation, the European Research Council, the Royal Academy of Engineering, and the Cambridge Trust. And so that leads me to think to myself, this isn't just some sort of hack idea, some hack business. There's some serious people behind this project and it sounds like it really could work. It is true, it would be very hard to electrify some parts of society. Like I've said before, shipping, that's a challenge. Um, you know, large jets, you know, large passenger airlines, that's still a challenge. We're still some way off that being electrified. This could be the solution that fills in those gaps. What do you guys think? Let me know what you think in the comments.